G'day, it's Robbie Regain. Well, in a recent video, I reviewed this Morse 2 Life Center with this unusual uh, nose shape, which turned out, turned out to be super great because it gives you excellent clearance for close-in work on the end of round stop. You've got good cutter clearance and also the nose is a little bit longer, which makes it even better and small diameter for a Morse 2, it's not much bigger than a Morse 1, so you get good tool post clearance as well, so it's an all around good unit, super accurate, super accurate. Anyway, the only issue with this is that if you are not going to use it in a mini lathe, which is where I'm using it, where the length of the taper doesn't need to be very long and it will eject no problem whatsoever, if you use it in a longer uh, quill on a larger lathe such as my Shorblum it won't eject because it doesn't have sufficient length or it doesn't have an ejection tang of any sort so yeah it, uh, on some lathes, bigger lathes it's going to be an issue as far as ejecting it so I'm going to have to machine this to fit a tang now the usual setup is that the easy setup is just drill it tap it and put a little stud, study bolt in there of some sort. This particular life centre came already drilled and tapped so you can screw in a tang and you can get tangs which are a proper regular tang like that, like that bit, with a thread on them and they just screw on, you know, so you, yeah, they're professionally made. But you don't have to have a tang that shape, it can be round like that, it just has to be something that sticks out. and. In this case, we're going to drill this, which I don't expect to be hard, and you can see that, well, not terribly hard. You can see how that's scuffed up over the years, and it should be able to drill it, no problem, and definitely with a cobalt drill, you'll be able to drill it, and uh, then it's a matter of trying to tap a thread. If it's too hard to tap a thread, we won't. We'll just machine up a, a bit of rod or a stud just to go in there and we'll just lock tight that in there and, and that'll do the job. Just make it a bit, a little bit longer than you want and then just grind it back to length and so you get the ejection position where you want it. So it's easily done. Now the issue is of course basically how do you grip this? Well you grip it in a basically three jaw chuck will do it. All of your drilling force is going to be longitudinal so there shouldn't be any, any twist going on. And provided it's smooth sided like that, parallel sided, you should be okay. The actual body will be supported by the bearing outer, the race. And there's three of them in there, so it should be pretty rigid. You should be able to grip it okay without deforming it. And uh, it's a straightforward exercise. I've done it before, but that was a long time ago. Where it gets tricky is where you've got something this shape where it's not parallel. Now you can grip it in the chuck which is what it's going to have to do, but you have to support the, the taper with a, a centre of some sort, like a, low, uh, a tra sorry, a steady of some sort, a, a travelling steady or a, a fixed steady, would basically just to stop any twisting. This is not ideal, but you've got no option here, and there's no other way to really grip it. Um, yeah, generally... They're parallel and the smaller sizes. Not many of them have got this stupid, uh, uh, you know, tapered effect. This one's actually got, uh, um, this is Morse 3 and this is Morse, Morse 2, so you can see the difference. And uh, physically, that's a lot smaller. So it should fit in the three jaw chuck, uh, the normal jaws, on a, a regular lathe something larger than a mini lathe, you shouldn't have any problems, and yep, we'll get on with it, let's do it. Now to grip this without marking it, we have to pad the jaws, and what I use is old belt sander strip, like that. This is a trick I got from a viewer years ago, and I use it all the time, it's an excellent, excellent way of doing it. What you do with this is you basically can tear it down to the width you want, so, so there, so that's pretty well perfect, and we have it with the gritty side outwards and we use the back, 
and you just go around the amount you want so it comes close to butting up, which is there. And just get some tin snips, something suitable. Is that in camera? Oh, yeah. Let me just cut it to length. And yeah, it fits around nicely. So that's a lot better than trying to use individual tabs which are going to fall out and they won't curve to the job. Because remember, your inside jaws will have a curved face on them. So that'll, that should give a, a, a good grip and not mark anything. So I'll go and mount it up and we'll get on with it. Now you could use the normal standard chuck, which is a five inch on this particular lathe, and that would fit in quite okay. But to get maximum uh, coverage to, you know, prevent marking, I'm going to go for the longest set of jaws I've got. And this is a, an old six inch uh, Pratt Bernard, which has got quite good length. And I'll, I'll put it in that and grip it in that just for the exercise, goes in that way. So, yeah, um, go for what, whatever you've got, which you've got the longest jaw face to, you know, reduce the chance of marking it. And, yeah, we'll do it. Here it is in the chuck with the padding in place. Good on the outside. And being parallel and the jaws being fairly long, I'm sure that it will just pull up in the correct uh, orientation. If you want to make sure, just bring in, your, it, bring in the centre against the end of it because there will be a machine point in there. I normally have that, a centre point, and just... Put it in that position before you lock it up, and that way everything will be, you know, correctly aligned. That's probably a good idea if you've got external jaws. You know, we're only gripping on a very small part of the of the body of the of the uh, the life centre. In this case, with long jaws, you don't need to do this. It, it's not necessary. However, uh, if you are you if you're modifying a live centre but it's got the, you know a non-parallel sided body on it, such as this one, which is a bit unusual, but they do exist. As you're only gripping on a on a raised section, you would definitely use the the tail stock, you know, with a centre in it to align the to align the actual taper before you lock it up, and you would definitely use a steady of some sort to keep it in, in that position so you know before you actually really pull the tail stock away you'll get your you would get your steady um, in position I mean as, as I said you could use the traveling steady because you're not going to be um, using the carriage so you could just basically position the carriage underneath uh, where you want to have the, the uh, traveling steady because most people will have traveling steadies but not always fixed steadies and then basically remove the uh, the centering device, put your drill bit in and then drill the job. Now as far as the size of the bolt that you put in the the taper, or you're going to put in the taper, it, you know, you can make it whatever diameter you want, it doesn't have to be huge. For a Morse 2, an 8mm bolt's plenty big enough, and because uh, all the load's longitudinal. So we've got an 8mm Allen headed bolt, 8mm tap, odds and sods that I've had lying around and a good uh, reference chart for drilling you know using the correct size drill for the tap I mean you can either sight them by eye as I've shown in the past well this is a good chart that I got from um, the bolt depot and it gives you uh, the metric uh, bolt sizes and it gives you the uh, the metric drill sizes so for an, for a um, for an eight mil bolt they recommend 7.1 or or 6.9 so we've got a 7 mil drill so that'll be good enough for either of those you know depending on whatever pitch you've got it won't really matter so we'll go 7 mil and uh, see how it drills now I'm going to use cobalt drills and you know that they're going to do the job 7 mil here we go so that's the drill we want now we'll just knock the lathe speed back to its lowest speed because when you use cobalt drills you want to keep the speed right back otherwise you can you know damage them they're meant for low speed um, 
accurate drilling. And yeah, they'll go through spring steel or anything. They're pretty damn good. These are some banggood ones I got. Very impressive. Okay, so the jaws are padded. The lathe speed is at the lowest speed. We've got everything aligned. In this case, it's simple parallel sided job. We've got the cobalt drill in. I'm using a, a collet chuck, but you can use a drill chuck. I'm using collet chuck because I don't want to mark my nice, pretty new cobalt drills. So we'll try drilling it and see how hard it is. You can see that there's a little bit of run out because of the padding probably, but that's not going to matter because it doesn't have to be absolutely perfectly ac accurate. Yeah, it's drilling pretty right. Hmm, a bit on the hard side. It's may not tap very well. well. We'll see anyway. Yeah, this is quite hard. I, I think I might lock tight a plug in this. I doubt whether this is going to tap. I'll try it and see anyway. You can see how this uh, plate keeps all the crap off of the, the waves. Simple addition like that has a big effect on keeping your uh, your ways clean. It's just bolted on with the travelling steady bolts. Okay, that's, that should be more than enough. You don't have to go in very far. So now I'll put a, a tap in here. And we'll try and tap it. I think that's going to be a bit too hard myself, but we will see what we will see. It's no drama if we can't tap this because as I pointed out you can just lock tight in a, a stud of some sort, you know, a plug. And uh, maybe I'll have to do that, we'll see. You can, you know, machine this to any diameter you want or just machine up a, a plug the right diameter and just lock tight it in. So we'll give it a go and see what happens. I'll just try it dry to begin with. And because uh, if we're going to be lock tighting it we don't want to get any contamination up there and we'll just uh, pull it over by hand just bring up the tailstock and just wind it in you shouldn't have to apply excessive force doing it this way oh, it, is, it is tapping it yeah, looks all right i think yep okay put a little lube on there looks like this will do the job Yep, no problem. You can always tell when you're tapping if the, you see the the tap start to twist or you hear a ticking noise, and, and particularly if there's no cuttings coming out, you know that it's too tight. You're either you know the drill hole's too small or the metal's too hard. It doesn't matter if you drill the hole a bit bigger than necessary because you know it's just a pretty low load-bearing application in this case so yeah we're going we're going good no problems at all piece of cake as they say in the Zinadu workshop piece of cake Okay, now you saw we didn't apply a lot of force to this. There's an 8mm bolt, an old one I've got lying around. Screws in, no problem. So the whole exercise was relatively painless. And uh, that's all it is. I've just got to clean the thread out, trim this to length, and job's done. It's as simple as that. Okay, we'll blow out the crap. Square bit of shop here is always handy. And then I'll 
try this and see how it, it goes in the shoreblum. Whoops. In you go. Yeah, it screws in good. That's going to be too long, but we can just adjust it lengthwise to whatever we want for the for the quill ejection point. So the existing ejection point is right there. So that's good. Out she comes, so that's a collar chat. So that's where we want to aim for, you know, get something similar. A little, little bit further out won't matter. Now, see, too long. So we're going to have to shorten the bolt. So I'll just take some of the, the bolt back and we'll try it again. Now this is a job the, the mighty Hilda with a little cutoff disc in it does particularly well. It's great for trimming bolts or cutting rod. We'll just take a rough guess at what this has to be. So I'll stick in the bit you don't want in the vise. Fire her up and we'll do it. Easy peasy, doesn't matter how hard that mother is, this little disc will go through it like no problem at all. It'll be hot so we'll cool it down. Let's try it and see how it goes. That looks pretty good to me. I think that'll be about about right. We'll try it. Perfecto. How's that, eh? <laughs> How good is that, eh? That was a good guess. So there you go. Job done. Easy as that. So now we're we're in business. We can use it in the shoreblum, perfecto. And if we want to use it in the, uh, the little 7x12, we, we can take out the, the screw-in bolt. I'll try it with a screw-in bolt in it and just see how much further the quill has to come out on the 7x12. But that's how you do it. It's easy. Easy job. Now, see. So your quill's got to come out further. That's the problem. With these seven by twelves, they don't like a long, a long uh, taper. So yeah, so to use it in here, ideally, you just take the, take the bolt out, and being Alan and Heather, that's no problem at all. So yeah, best of both worlds. So there you go, guys. That's how you do it. It's not difficult, and uh, everything spins over. Everything's undamaged. No difference. It's just that you've now got a a removable tang on it. Piece of cake. Okay, see you next time. Cheers.